first touring experience with the ocean was intense. It was great. I've never toured before or even played any show out of Switzerland. I had to start to know the band members slowly and it actually goes pretty fast because you're so stuck in one bus for 20 days. It felt to me that I was at the right place, you know. The first show I made with them uh, was at the Half House Festival. But we didn't really have a chance to rehearse before because we were in the US and we flew straight back to Paris, got picked up there and taken to Half Fest. And that was the first day I've ever met this guy, really. I just had to, you know, step in the bus and my first rehearsal with the band was uh, actually on stage. I don't know, I don't know, thousand, two thousand people. My second tour was already a nightliner tour. I think in a way it's more rock and roll than um, than a van tour. You never have to drive, so that's really comfortable. You just got in your rolling living room, you know, and got drunk with everybody and then you have your bed. Being a nightliner is so amazing because you get the time to check out the city. We were really lucky to, to be with really, really cool people. Sitting next to the driver, smoking cigarettes in the bus, seeing people like passed out in the living room, not even able to reach their bunks and everything. It's just different in terms of how you sleep and how you don't sleep and how you just spend your complete day on uh, highways. You know, you're a child and you got people driving you and when you get out the nightliners, people telling you, yeah, you got toilet papers there, drinks there and everything. <laughs> Van tours are always more kind of an adventure somehow. You're driving yourself and sometimes you have to drive all day long and you you arrived super late at the venue, tired, and still have to like load in and play. You have to drive a lot, even if you get drunk as hell the night before. <laughs> Sometimes it's maybe not the most responsible way to drive. <laughs> I just love touring, so... However... <laughs> Are you guys fucking ready for some more? Yeah! those four months and a half in uh, 2008 was just amazing. I've seen stuff for the next 20 years. I think most of the people wouldn't have that chance for their whole life. There's so much to tell about this tour that we could write a book about it. We had the chance to go to Ukraine, which I don't know if was a chance or not. Yeah, Ukraine was really an adventure. We were playing those huge venues like fucking classical theater or I don't know what, you know, with like 800 seats. When we got to that place we were just all like, wow. Yeah, that was one of my favorite places to work. There were only black metal bands <laughs> and there were all these kids tra getting totally drunk. People there are just really poor and um, they can't really afford to buy merch or anything. Although we sold our stuff for cost price but it was still way too much for them. So we had all these people coming to us after the show and they were handing us Ukrainian money bills that they wanted us to sign. It was just really bizarre. That was a cool show, but then we slept at this, oh, this, like, military hostel and, oh, it was really dirty and grim, really. The promoter was telling us that we should, you know, make it quiet because, like, the army was walking around, you know, and if we would, like, make noise. You wouldn't know what would happen and when you walk in the in the corridors you always cross military guys with guns and shit and looking at you like this because you're not wearing uniform. Toilets were like in a hole on the floor full of shit on on the walls and everything. And the rooms were dirty as fuck that was ugh. Actually there were feces on my sheets, yes. And then the day after we were in Kiev and that was really cool, a cool show too. And there we slept at the promoter's place, who was, I don't know who he was exactly, but... An arms dealer, or a drug trafficker, or maybe a modern slave trader? 
They had this fancy, fancy flat. They had a shower with massage sprinklers or whatever, so it was kind of two opposites in two days. So that was a bit um, of, a, of a shock for us. I don't think lots of them are going there, you know, and people are like really dedicated, you know, and that's something I really appreciated um, when we were touring Eastern Europe. The crowd was really amazing. Although they're coming to like a small show like ours, they're like for them it's the same that if they were going to like the biggest metal show ever and they're giving you so much energy and passion. And that was really moving because they're sacrificing a lot to to organize shows and it was a great honor to be part of it. in Serbia, I guess, yeah. The show was really good. That was one of the most amazing show we ever played. Like, people were, I remember people were just carrying Robin, you know, while he was playing. Everyone was just on the floor, there was no stage or anything, but the people were really into it, and sometimes these shows are better than, the, you know, the big halls you play with heaps of people inside. There were maybe like 150 people or something, but the room was packed, and it was just going out of control. Those people were partying so much, you know, like at the end of the show people were almost like yelling at us because we had no more merch and everything. We were all just really, really stressed because we had such a shitty day, you know, fighting with the water security to get into the country. And uh, we'd been driving for like 13, 14 hours or something, it was fucked up. So everybody was kind of stressed in a way and that show was like the perfect release, you know, after that everything felt so much better. but. There was this aura of violence and there was like broken washing basin. And like on the way to the um, to the accommodation, they were like throwing luggage on each other. So I remember Luke and Mike um, like just holding their each other's head and just spitting, you know, like I just know I woke up the next day with terrible pain in my chest and I had actually a broken rib that I had to deal with for the next two and a half months of being on the road still, which was real shit. <laughs> that was a night where everybody got super fucked up, like super drunk till like seven in the morning. Unfortunately, I wasn't. <laughs> I was the only one because I had to like move the van. I don't even know how it happened. I think I tried to uh, throw my suitcase at Luke for some reason. And I kind of forgot to let go of the suitcase, so I kind of threw myself away. <laughs> that night I hated everyone, because I was the only one not drunk that night. <laughs>